data warehouse using Informatica. Uh -huh. And uh, since IBM is also having a reporting tool called as IBM, you know, Cognos, probably you might have heard about it, Cognos reporting. So uh -huh. I worked on, you know, Cognos projects too, you know. So I know how to bring the data warehouse to reporting environment, how to create, you know, models in reporting, how to create reports, how to publish reports, totally from, you know, ETL to reporting I have, you know, knowledge. Okay. So this, okay. this is my work experience. And regarding training, you know, last five years, you know, I'm providing, you know, online training. So, okay. and, uh, you know, what I want to do today is, I want to introduce you ETL probably, you know, you know all this stuff, just, you know, to figure it out, you know, how my explanation will be there, you know, the way of presentation, you know. Yes. Yes, you work on ETL, probably you might have, you know, known this stuff, just, you know, for explanation wise, you know, I will give you, you know, a demo or introduction class today. Okay. Sure, sure. Fine. Thank you. See, for uh, what you did, you know, previously in your previous project, same thing you will be doing here also in Informatica. Over there you wrote SQL and PL SQL to extract process and load data. Mm -hmm. Here you are going to use a graphical interface. You know, Informatica is a GUI tool. Have you seen any kind of Informatica tool, you know, interface? Yeah, sure. I did. I did. You so, have seen the ma maps in the work environment or no? generally, yeah, I, you know? I, you saw, I saw the, that's a power center tool, right? Yeah, power center tool, yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Okay. So basically GUI interface, you know, you know, it's like, you know, you will feel, you know, you will feel, you know, like as if, you know, you are working with a Toad application only. Learning Informatica is like a learning Toad. Okay. So you already know data. I mean, I am just, you know, giving you actually, I mean, it's not that complicated for you actually since, you know, you work on, you know, database and PLC. What is the difference between, you know, ETL tool and, you know, and a normal, you know, code based, you know, SQL is ETL tool provides you GUI interfaces, just like, you know, how, you know, Tor gives you different, you know, features, which you can use, you know, to create, you know, tables, you know, and uh, write, you know, SQL. Mm -hmm. Similar fashion, you know, Informatica, you know, is also providing you some components, which we will be using for a data extraction, transformation, and loading. Basically, mm -hmm. using Informatica, what happens is uh, your job, you know, to implement ETL become very smooth, actually. So that's why, you know, we will be using, you know, Informatica. That is, that is one thing. And uh, however, you know, some major, you know, advantages are also there. If you use, you know, Informatica compared to writing, you know, manual SQL. Right. So there are, there are some uh, real-time scenarios where manual, you know, manually, how we will write SQL, right, that scenario will fail. Where, you know, Informatica will succeed, you know. Like that also some real-time scenarios are there. Where, okay. you know, compulsory, you may have to use informatic, normal, you know, style of uh, writing SQL, PL, SQL will fail. For example, I will give you a small example. Imagine I have some uh, data in my notepad, or we can say flat file or XML file. Some okay. data is there. Let's say 1 million records I have in a XML file or in a flat file. Flat file means, you know, I think you are familiar, right? What is flat file? Okay. Yeah, um, the uh, the f uh, data files that we load. Uh, text text yeah, document. Text, no? Right. Like right. a text uh -huh. document. So imagine mm -hmm. you have a flat file, some 1, 1 million records are there. I want to, I have like a last 10 years of data in that text document. But mm -hmm. uh, I want only previous 5 years data only I want. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is that uh, I can't write a SQL query on that flat file, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. You can't write a select statement. So scenarios like that, you know. So where you know you can use you know ETL. However, you know you may have a workaround. Maybe mm -hmm. you may use uh, some import you know tools you know to yeah. import and the you know. into a temporary table and then take the only that part or something. Yeah, like I mean that. you know probably some workarounds are there, but still you know maybe data maybe a lot of you know messed up data is there. You know, it's not that you know. I mean processed. Uh, so some uh, scenarios you know maybe there's maybe. Some data I have in a, uh, let's say, uh, let me give you another scenario. Like, for example, I have some data in a, in a SQL Server database, some mm -hmm. data in a Oracle database. That means, like, a three, four tables are there in SQL Server, three, four tables are mm -hmm. in Oracle. Mm -hmm. 
Now what I want to do, I want to write a query on these two database tables and I want to put data from these uh, two database tables and mm -hmm. process the data and deliver the data to a target table. So mm -hmm. basically let's assume that you know these two tables are having a common column. Mm -hmm. Let's assume. Mm -hmm. Now if two tables have a common column in the same database, you can write a SQL query, right? Right. But uh, I have two different database tables, one SQL Server table, one Oracle table. They have a common column. Now I want to write a join query on these two heterogeneous tables. Now in that scenario, obviously we will face problem, right? Uh -huh. so probably for that also you may have a work, work around. Maybe you may have to connect, you know, to SQL Server, import the table from SQL Server. I mean, you know, see here it may look so simple, but in real time, you know, you may have so many, you know, tables, lot of data may be there, you right. know, establishing that connection. That scenario, you know, it, that process may take longer time to implement actually, in right. real time. Mm -hmm. So, that, I mean, this is like, so this Informatica is so flexible that, you know, it works with, you know, different environments, very easily it can connect to, you know, various, you know, uh, databases, file systems, you know, applications, and it can conveniently extract the data and uh, process the data and deliver data. Like this, you know, in a multiple scenarios, you know, uh, the Informatica tool, you know, generally proves to be, you know, very convenient tool. Mm -hmm. So that's why generally people prefer, you know, using ETL tools. And uh, obviously it provides a GUI interface, you know, you're not writing, you know, complicated SQL, you know, stored procedures, functions here. I mean, okay. you know, uh, I mean, it's like a working with, you know, I mean, you will see the difference, you know, working with the code and, you know, writing a SQL in the database, right? Difference mm -hmm. will be there, you know, a lot of, you know, convenience will be there, you know, if you work with Toad. What is the advantage of Toad, you know, compared to SQL, uh, SQL developer? Difference. Uh, Toad, okay. yeah, you compare with SQL, uh, SQL developer. Yeah, so it's easy to see the data on the, on the screen. So mostly for me, for, uh, I like uh, Toad. Uh, to view the data, to see all the tables at once, you know, all the P all the PL SQL codes in uh, in uh, packages and triggers uh, sections. It's easy to mm -hmm. uh, view and uh, understand kind of thing. So, or write SQLs itself to get the data and see the result set is easier on Toad. That's that's how uh, I see it. But for me, if I have to write a uh, P write a piece of PL SQL, I would I would just do do it in on a text pad and compile it on the DOS prompt. But yes, okay. I do use Toad too. But to just definitely to see the re, um, data or you know if any anything just for viewing purposes, it's more convenient because I see all the tables views, materialized views, everything over there without writing SQL for a lot of things. Okay. See, strategically, the when a company uses a Toad tool, means Mm -hmm. See, SQL developer is a free tool. You don't have right. to pay even a single dollar. You can simply download it mm -hmm. and you know use it with Oracle database. So obviously they are giving a free tool. Then why so some companies purchase Toad? You know, Toad is a paid edition. You have to pay them money actually. Right. So it's not like, not a free application. Then even though Oracle is giving you a free application, why people people are paying money for a tool like Toad means? There is a major, uh, you know, advantage is there with Toad. What mm -hmm. is that major advantage means? Toad can connect to any database. Okay. It can, uh, you can link Toad to DB2, you can link it to SQL Server, you can link it to Oracle. I mean, it uh, can, you know, connect it to multiple databases and uh, less learning curve. Right. Less learning curve. But mm -hmm. imagine, you know, I want to use in a SQL developer with a DB2 database. I want to link, you know, my SQL developer to DB2. I mean, probably, I mean, it won't work actually. It works with only Oracle products only. Uh -huh. So that is ma major, you know, difference is there. Imagine you have a company where they are using all Oracle products only. Then uh -huh. there is no need of purchasing code. You know, you can freely download this, you know, uh, you know, this uh, SQL developer, yeah. you know, and yeah. you can use it actually. So 
the environments where you have multiple databases, they will compulsory go for cloud only because, I mean, uh, using so many applications is, uh, I mean, maintenance of that application is also unnecessary headache actually. So okay. they will, you know, choose one interface actually. In case in your project you have multiple databases, means mm -hmm. they will go with the one, you know, database. But imagine, you know, entire company is using only one database, means SQL developer, you know, they may prefer. So it depends on choice actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. So, anyhow, so same interface, you know, same, you know, field informatic also will give you. Just GUI interface, drag, drop, you know, double click, write one or two lines of code, you know, and process the data. For example, imagine I have a database table mm -hmm. and uh, I have, let's say, 10 years of data, last 5 years of data I want. I have a year column in the table. Let's say I have a employee table. Okay, mm -hmm. I have when an employee is hired, you know, in that company, so that year, you know, column is there. Based on that, I want to filter the employees. Like, mm -hmm. I want only last five years, you know, all those employees who hired last five years ago. Generally, how do we write a SQL in our database? So, generally, you know, normal syntax, how it will be? Um, so, select start from employees where uh, <coughs> year is... Uh, um, is greater than like greater like, than you know I mean yeah. condition you know, yeah, yeah. Two two one, or, you know like whatever it is okay right right you are writing entire select statement here but you know if you want to implement same thing inside Informatica just to filter data Informatica provides you transformations actually here so mm -hmm. there are just you know some objects you know which are provided by Informatica so you can just use this you know filter transformation or filter object you can see. So, and simply all you have to do is write that where class only. You don't have to write here an entire SQL statement. The many SQL, you know, Informatica can, you know, fill in, you know, behind the scenes. So, yes, okay. you have to supply where class, like in a year greater than, you know, like 2000, let's say 5 or 10, you know, like that. So, mm -hmm. just on a where class only. You don't need to write in an entire SQL here. So, what I mean to say is, I mean, data processing is very convenient, you know, here in Informatica. For example, if I want to sort data, Let's say on a year column, let's say I want descending order. We have to write the entire select statement, right? Select mm -hmm. star, you know, that order by, you know, that entire condition you have to write. Mm -hmm. But same thing, you know, inside Informatica, you you have you want to, you know, implement this. It provides your transformation called as sorted transformation. All you have to do is, it will give you a small checkbox, you know, beside every column. Mm -hmm. So, you have to, which column you want to sort? Select that column. It will ask you, do you want ascending order or descending order? Select it. What I mean to say is, I mean like here GUI uh, only, yeah, just like you know, code only. Very convenient interface. So learning wise, you know, anybody can learn this tool. You know, probably around three weeks. You know, normal. You know, freshers mm -hmm. or you know, people who have one two years, three years experience in IT, they can mm -hmm. learn it in three weeks actually. So okay. I mean, learning wise, you know, very easy only. See. Core concept, you know, Informatica works, works on basic, you know, database concepts only. Okay. So, same, you know, conditions. Only difference is here, we are using a front end tool we are using. Informatica is like a front end tool which we will use to process the data between a source and target actually. So, it will act like a mediator between source and target. It pulls the data from source and it uh, processes the data. For a transformation, we will call it as processing it is and delivers the data wherever you want to deliver the data, you okay. can deliver the data. So it's kind of, you know, interacts between a source and target. Generally, Toad, you know, what it will do is, it connects you to only one source, right? And uh -huh. you manipulate the data in one source only. I mean, you are not pulling the data from the source, Multiple you are not source. processing and, you know, you are not sending the data to target, right? I mean, it right. doesn't, you know, uh, work, you know, with uh, two different tools, you know, for data, mm -hmm. I mean, two different tools are, you know, files you know for data you know transformation you know additionally what it will do is informatica it interacts between a source and target almost like a code only okay okay fine so this is regarding you know informatic and here you know transformation is optional only not compulsory it depends on business requirement it's not like you know every time you have to filter the data right you have to filter the data when there is a requirement only Yes. There is a no requirement. I want to see. I want to simply send data from this table to that table, without yeah. you know modifying anything. As it is, I want to deliver the data. 
you can do it you know that depends on business requirement i seen some projects you know where you have to simply deliver the data from here to there also so okay. obviously that will also comes under a project only for that also they will hire one or two people you know to you to implement and to test and you know to migrate it to production servers okay. so like for example uh, you know like four, five years ago i worked on a cisco project they used mm-hmm. informatica to deliver data from oracle database to terra data in that project just mm-hmm. you know, as it is as it is you know data delivery mm-hmm. so but you know terra data also provides some import export tools actually mm-hmm. so the person who decided to go with informatica probably he made a mistake actually instead of using informatica they could have directly used uh, terra data import export tools are there terra pump t pump you know some tools are there you can simply use that import tool you know because you know simply they are uh, delivering data from oracle to you know you know this uh, terra data probably this guy may not know you know he is not aware of terra data i guess so yeah. he thought you know i mean usually you know we see you know so many people in it you know if you don't know that technology means what he will do he will not recommend it he will go with the you know tools or you know that concepts which he is familiar with i have seen you know a lot of you know i mean you know people you know architects you know who design you know for you know this kind of stuff as well so he made a mistake later they scrapped that project as well you know what we have done you know for 6 months again they redid it you know using that terra pump only end of the day again so sometimes you know i mean we will use you know informatica to just you know extract data and deliver data so it's not compulsory to process data transformation is optional only okay 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 and generally you know we use informatica to implement a data warehouse but you know informatica or a etl tools are not always you know i mean it's not compulsory that you have to use this one only for you know data warehousing only there is no rule like that you mm-hmm. can use this tool to deliver data between two different you know applications or you know two different you know uh, file systems so it's not compulsory that you know you have to use this product only for data warehousing but main purpose of using etl tools are for data warehousing only they have created this tool you know for data warehousing requirement but mm-hmm. you can use this applications to deliver you know uh, data to other applications also like you know uh, if you take example of city bank project you know over there you know they they are delivering data to an application called as fraud management application they they you know so like that you know it depends you know so what is the requirement in your project so are you using this one for uh, data warehouse implementation or just you know transfer of data between you know multiple applications you know so mm-hmm. for that requirement are you using that depends as well okay mm-hmm. fine and uh, see as we discussed that you know main purpose is to implement you know data warehouse but what is data warehouse i mean how do you define a data where how do you differentiate a data warehouse from a database it's a it's a huge um, huge um, amount of data i mean uh, obviously in a database also i can can i, I can load yeah, huge amount of data right, right. Mm-hmm. true so i mean how do we i mean i've seen actually people uh, kind of try to differentiate so many definitions are there out there in a, you know uh you know online you know i see it but how do you i mean conveniently how can we explain you know difference between a data warehouse and a database mhm see data warehouse database both are databases only actually okay. you know so i mean you are going to implement a data warehouse you are going to use database only right oracle yeah. database or you know obviously mm-hmm. the product is database only so why we are calling that one as a data warehouse a normal you know database you know we are calling it a database means apart from holding huge amount of data i can hold huge amount of data in normal database also the way we create a tables in this database they follow some data warehousing principles by following these principles we will design these tables you can't in you know, a simply create a table and you know add uh, you add columns as you want okay. so they, they there are some principles are there data warehousing principles by following this data warehousing principles we will create tables in that database so uh-huh. if you you can create you can follow this data warehousing principles and create the tables you know in a normal database also you can create then you can call that one as a data warehouse also 
Any any database you can use to implement data warehouse. So then how do you differentiate a data warehouse and database means whatever tables you are creating in that database, they are, if they are, those tables are following data warehousing principles, then you can call that database as a data warehouse. Understood? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And another major difference also there. What is the difference means? You can't use any database for a data warehousing. That is also one point is very important point. Okay. I mean, uh, while I that, for example, I can't use the MS Access database for data warehousing, right? Why, mm -hmm. why means? Imagine I have like a 500 million records. Mm -hmm. I want to load it to MS Access, you know, database table. It's not possible. I think, you know, last time I checked with uh, Microsoft, uh, I think in a table we can load, if I'm right, you know, I was talking about few years ago, this one, 10 million records, I think, you know, one table can accept. I mean, uh, last few years ago, I verified, I don't know about latest version. So, I mean, some restrictions will be there. All databases doesn't support, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, a huge amount of data loads. You mm -hmm. know, like, for example, I want, in a database, I want to create, like, a, uh, I want to, I want a database space, uh, 2 terabytes. I mean, mm -hmm. that much data I want to load into my database. So, mm -hmm. I want a database, that database to hold 2 terabytes of data. All databases will not permit this one. Some limitations are there for normal databases. However, you know, there are powerful databases are there in market. So, which can, you know, support all data warehousing principles. Okay. So, even though you can use any data warehouse to create data warehousing table, I mean, any database you can use to create data warehousing tables, but practically, in real time, I can use it in lab, no problem. For training purpose, I can use MS Access also. That's not a big deal. In corporate environment, in real time, you can't use practically any database you want, you know, for data warehousing. Those databases have to be very powerful and, you know, uh, sending data and retrieving data should be also be fast. Loading data is not only, imp that is not the important here. Right. Even, you know, delivering data and retrieving data is also very crucial, right? Imagine right. if I am going to create a business intelligence report, you know, based mm -hmm. on the data warehouse. Imagine mm -hmm. uh, retrieving data is taking two hours. Then mm -hmm. to populate data into that report will take two hours, right? How much time? You know, it's a lot of time, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, people expect, you know, BI reports and probably one, two minutes, five minutes, that's okay, you know, acceptable 15 minutes. But one, two hours, if it is taking, is what is the point of creating data? Whereas you can, you know, normal PowerPoint, you know, you can create and deliver it. Right. So, instantaneously, you can, you know, deliver reports, you know, that's why only they are, you know, using BI tools. And also, you know, what is the purpose of using ETL? Why are mm -hmm. we using ETL tool? For BI reports only. If there is no BI reporting, there is no ETL. What is the purpose? Mm -hmm. No need of ETL also. The main purpose of using, you know, I mean, ETL tool is that they need a business intelligence tool and they will be using, you know, BI, creating BI reports. So, mm -hmm. obviously, this BI tool is going to connect it to data warehouse. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, ETL people, you know, they will create a data warehouse so that you know, BI people can use this data warehouse and create, you know, BI reports. Have you created any time, you know, business intelligence reports in your work environment? No, I haven't. Okay. So, BI reports are like, you know, normal, you know, you might have seen the PowerPoint, you know, the chart reports, you know, you've seen right. it, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, output will look like that only, exactly. For example, I have a sample report I will show you here. Last year's... Uh, Twitter report I have actually. This is the report published by Twitter organization. This is a HR report of their company. Uh -huh. So this report talks about male-female ratio in Twitter company. Okay. So if you see overall, I mean this uh, overall 70% are you know, men you know, who are working in Twitter, only 30% girls are there. And they classify this report based on tech, non-tech and leadership. Tech uh -huh. side or IT side in Twitter only 10% are you know, female. 50% in you know, a non-tech site, just you know, print office, you know, this kind of you know work they are doing. Leadership, you know, side you know, only 21%. So right. this is the report created out of a Twitter. This this report looks like a normal, you know, chart report, you know, like you know how we see in PowerPoint only. Mm -hmm. But what is the difference between BI report and a PowerPoint report means your PowerPoint uh, is not connected to database, right? The right. data will not be PowerPoint, you know. Data will not be delivered to that report. Not real time data. Yeah, not real time data. And even if you want to make any changes, manually we have to do the changes. 
Right. But BA reports uh, reports are connected to database. So every time you know you run the report based on the current data, automatically the report will refresh actually. That right. is the main purpose of you know using BA tools. You know back then you know actually when I was you know working on data warehousing in 2005, you know around that time. I mean, very few companies used to show interest actually. At that time only, data warehousing got picked up actually, 2000, you know, five. Oh. Oh. So, uh, before that, you know, small companies, you know, what they used to do manually, you know, they used to, you know, write queries and create reports, you know, small, right. you know, reports, you know, they used to generate, you know, Oracle, you know, reports, you know, the right. forms, you know, all these things they used to create actually back then, you know. But mm -hmm. slowly they have seen, you know, importance of data warehousing, you know, data warehousing became so popular uh, since uh, four or five years and it became too, you know, I mean, de demanding these days. Exactly. They are using, you know, evening marketing, you know, everywhere they are using, you know, so they are analyzing the data, you know, uh, and what do we say, even, you know, for advertisements they are analyzing, you know, uh, analyzing the data, how the trends are, you know, going on, you know. All these things, you know, they are analyzing big data, you know, all these things, you know, came into picture actually. These the BI tools, BDL right. tools, big data, you know, they are using, it became popular actually. And I think, you know, this industry, you know, data warehousing, you know, is going to be, you know, hot actually for next 10 15 years, you know. I mean, it is going to be, you know, uh, actually demand only. So resources are also not, you know, available on data warehousing because usually nobody will learn, you know, data warehousing. Uh, these uh, TTL tools, reporting tools in colleges and schools, you know, these tools are not taught, you know. People learn Oracle, people learn Java, people learn, you know, .NET in uh, schools and colleges. Data warehousing tools like Informatica, you know, Cognos reporting, you know, these tools, you know, big data tools, nobody will teach in schools and colleges. You have to learn in corporate environment only. So obviously, you know, everybody will not go into, you know, this side, right? So less, you know, resources are there. And people who have skills in, you know, good skills in database mm -hmm. and people who know, you know, reporting tools, EDL tools, I mean, they are in huge demand actually. And uh, the guys who have, you know, very good, you know, SQL knowledge will succeed in data warehousing market, you know, compared to guys who have bare minimum knowledge in database. End of the day, see, your main concept is what we are avoiding SQL and using ETL tool here. But uh, basic concepts are what database concepts only. If you have, you know, good command in, you know, a database, uh, you can write a stored procedure in database and you can call that stored procedure to Informatica and use that logic here. That is also one advantage is there. Informatica mm -hmm. provides a transformation called a stored procedure transformation. Mm -hmm. So what is the advantage means? So let's say you don't know how to write the logic in Informatica. Mm -hmm. So you are very good with Oracle database, let's say. What you can do? You can write, create a stored procedure in your database. You can write the entire, you know, required logic inside stored procedure and create mm -hmm. it in the database and call it into Informatica using the transformation and process the data using that stored procedure also. So basically it's so flexible that if you have good command in, you know, database, I mean, obviously, you know, you will be succeeding, you know, uh, you know, very good, you know, uh, you know, good here in the data warehousing. Okay. okay. Fine. So like this, you know, data will flow, you know, from we will be pulling data from multiple, you know, tables, we will process the data and we will deliver that data to a database. Basically, mm -hmm. once the data is delivered to database as a UTL developer, your job is over actually, you will probably you will move to another project or, you know, another module, you know, you will move to. But, you know, this uh, data, whatever you have loaded into data warehouse, there will be an, another team will be there called as a reporting team. What they will do, they will use reporting tools and they will, you know, import these tables into their reporting environment and create, you know, reports like this, you know, right now you can see the report, right? This mm -hmm. kind of reports they will create. So, to implement, you know, entire data warehousing project, two tools they will use, a ETL tool and a reporting tool. Basically, data warehousing tools means what? ETL plus reporting is called as data warehousing tools. But different teams will work on different tools. You don't have to learn, you know, I mean, two different tools actually. It's not compulsory. ETL teams will be separate. Reporting teams will be separate. But to implement a data warehousing project, compulsory we need ETL and reporting. Like for example, if I want to uh, implement a programming project, I need a testing team and a development team, right? Two different mm -hmm. teams. Mm -hmm. So here also, 
ETL team reporting. And our, another thing is that here also we will be having testers actually. So ETL testing and reporting testing also. Because whatever data you have loaded, who will give you guarantee that you know processor data is accurate? There has to be a guy, right, who has to verify the data. So ETL tester will be there actually. So he will write a SQL, you know, manually, and he will verify, you know, that's you know, that uh, output with the current output, and he will quality test, you know, that entire, you know, data load. Got it? Yeah. Fine. And uh, next, uh, see another thing is that you know you can use, you know, uh, this uh, Informatica ETL tool almost with uh, any different any database. That mm -hmm. is the beauty of Informatica. Probably, I mean, it will connect it to any database. So mm -hmm. it creates a connection to that, you know, driver of that database. In, in, whenever you install any database, your driver will be there, right? Mm -hmm. So it will, you know, interface with the driver and import the tables from that database. So it can connect it to any database. It can import, you know, flat files, XML files. You know, it can work with, you know, legacy environments like, you know, COBOL files, it, you know. Yeah. Or you know, all uh, IBM technologies we have, right? You know, yeah, IBM mainframes in one. That is how they are using it at Wells Fargo. So they get the IBM files and XML files as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, are they using Informatica or data storage? They are using over there. They are using Informatica. I mean, usually if you are using mainframes, means uh, some projects, you know, what they will do. I mean, uh, they will usually you know be in touch with IBM, you know, teams, right? So mm -hmm. they will go for you know data stage and you know Cognos. I've seen some companies like that, but mm -hmm. uh, probably these guys you know went with Inform. I mean depends you know which product you want to use you know that depends actually. So Informatica is a market leader in a data warehousing. Out of 100 projects, 70 to 65 percent of the projects runs on Informatica only. So the mm -hmm. reason for that is, you know the Informatica came into market you know like. Uh, uh, around the 90s, you know, at that time, I think, you know, 93, mm -hmm. they came into IT actually. If you calculate, you know, probably 21, 22 years, you know, it yeah. has been since Informatica is in data warehousing business. Other companies, you know, they came, like, I think, you know, 7, 8 years ago, 10 years ago only. So in mm -hmm. this last 22 years, what they did is, big companies already went with Informatica. Why? Because, you know, they have a lot of money. In those days only, they implemented data warehouse. Like mm -hmm. AT&T, you know, all these companies, you know, Pfizer uses Informatica, AT&T uses Informatica, big companies, you know, you know, mm -hmm. Fortune 500 companies, you know, uh, you can see here, you know, out of 100, you know, companies, you know, Fortune companies, 79 companies, you know, they are, you know, big companies are using already Informatica, so they are using. And these data warehousing projects are very, ex very costly projects, actually. Why they are costly means? Licensing wise, you know, Informatica is a costly product only. Not only that, you know, they will be purchasing the infrastructure for that Informatica software, right? servers, you know, all that stuff. You know, they are very expensive. One data warehouse cost is around one to three million dollars. The entire project cost will be in the tune of, you know, 50 million dollars investment. So if you are making that much, in, I mean, I'm talking about you know, big companies, they need, you know, huge servers, right? So the, they, you know, these those projects cost very, you know, high actually, 50 to 100 million investment they will do for data warehousing project. That much investment once you make, I mean, why do they want to migrate to some other product? Again, you have to, you know, okay. make, you know, so many changes. Again, lot of investments actually, and you know, that is the main reason why you know it became market leader. These days, you know, almost every product provides same features only, I mean, one or two features here and there. I mean, usually people debate about, you know, products. You mm. know, my, you know, my product will do this, is this can, it can do, <laughs> my product is superior in that. You know, I mean, ignore those things. If you ask me in general, in generally, when you are competing in market, means almost, you know, every product, you know, can deliver same stuff. Probably one or two features here and there, you know, will be there. So any you know ETL tool is as you know sophisticated as Informatica. The main reason why Informatica clicked is they are in business since so many years, and Informatica is uh, concentrated in only data warehousing only. If you take you know IBM data stage, IBM is having like a hundred different products. Their managers are distracted hundred different you know directions. They have to you know 
take care of each and every IBM product how they are doing even though they have a different managers you know for different products you know the top level you know I am talking about CEO, CFOs you know they have to you know concentrate on you know hundred different teams mm -hmm. I mean Informatica you know they have only data related tools only data processing tools so they don't even have their databases you know just you know data related tools they are selling three four you know five six products they are selling in market like power center power exchange you know super glue power analyzer some data related tools they are selling so apart from that you know I mean obviously they didn't enter into other businesses like databases reporting also they don't provide if you mm -hmm. want a reporting tool go to IBM Microsoft or you know or Akin. they have a reporting tool purchase mm -hmm. anyone SAP is having a reporting purchase any one tool why because see you are not connecting your reporting tool to Informatica you are mm -hmm. linking your reporting tool to data warehouse so my ETL tool and reporting tool don't talk to each other at all right your ETL is kind of you know loading data to data warehouse and your reporting is you know receiving data from data warehouse they are not talking to each other at all they are talking with the both are talking with the data warehouse mm -hmm. but they are not talking to each other so doesn't matter which reporting tool you know you want you can use it that depends on your business requirement you can use you know Informatica, Cognos, Informatica, SAP BO, Informatica, OB so okay. any you know any reporting tool you can use with any ETL tool that depends on a project okay yeah. fine so like this you know uh, you know we have you know Informatica and uh, anyhow I will I just want to show you a sample map probably you might have seen how a map looks like I will show you like this you know you can see here you know you know where you can see a SQL code right simply you know GUI you know anywhere on you have just like a dot net you know just on drag drop you know link you know data you know we are delivering from one table to another table by using GUI objects here got it yeah fine and uh, another thing uh, here you know in our uh, training you know what we will be doing is I will be showing you how to pull data from flat files mm -hmm. and XML files mm -hmm. and how to extract data from Excel documents generally in Excel files we will have uh, sheets okay. right you can mm -hmm. create multiple sheets imagine mm -hmm. I have an Excel file with uh, multiple sheets mm -hmm. how to you know pull the data from the sheets you know I will be showing you exercise you know on that and uh, uh, we will be working with Oracle as a source, Oracle as a target initially okay. and at the end of our training what I will do, I work for IBM so I have some small real time data of a small company is there okay. so same data IBM uses in, uh, in their training programs also the same data I have and this is SQL Server data actually so at the okay. end of our uh, training what I will do is I will use the SQL Server database and I will show you how to design a data warehouse by following that uh, I said you know we will follow some guidelines to design data warehouse and tables right so mm -hmm. I will explain those guidelines and I will design the tables and I will load the data to that tables and I will show you that process I will show you okay okay the okay. so small database it is I mean uh, I the size will be like a hundred MB you know database but uh, this data what you know, whatever you know I have here it belongs to a real-time company data only Viewers data, you know, sample data of their company I have properly, you know, that is the data of a closer company, I guess. Because mm -hmm. I don't think in other companies you know operating right now. But you know, the real time data of that company I have with me and I will show you at the end of our you know program. Okay. Sure. And uh, this I mean is this I mean convenient time uh, this is convenient, right? I mean I ask to these guys, you know, to schedule it for two, three days at this time. Uh, yeah. Then you know I was for them to I mean I was planning to change uh, two hours later actually I mean uh, I mean okay. you are in Eastern time zone or uh, which time? No, I'm in Pacific time. Okay, Pacific means I think you know it's a uh, too early I think right for you? Yeah, it's 6 a.m. in the morning. So the thing is, um, I'm I'm okay like 6 to 7:15, 7:30 kind of time, and then uh, 9 o'clock. So right now I'm in between projects. So I can accommodate. Uh, I'm kind of flexible, but then uh, um, I don't know if I join soon. Then I'll have to stick to the early morning or evening timings. I mean, this timing is also okay with me. 
I mean, if, I mean, usually, you know, people who are in the Eastern time zone, I mean, uh, they think, you know, a little bit, you know, I mean, uh, usually their husbands will go to office, you know, I mean, everybody will not be working actually. The guys say train sometimes, you know, they will be at home actually. So they will be preparing dinner, you know, I thought, you know, properly, you know, I mean, in case if you are busy like that, I can change, you know, two hours late also. This time is also flexible for me. I mean, it's not a problem. Okay, sure, definitely. Thanks for uh, accommodating that. <laughs> okay, no problem. And uh, what we will do is, you know, uh, tomorrow, you know, uh, we will meet at the same time. Yeah. And if you have any queries, you know, uh, you can ask me. 